Welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. And I'm Courtney. And um, I'm tired. Actually, right now I'm not. Like, that's the crazy thing is I've been tired all week. I've been dreading, like, how much energy it's going to take to do the podcast. And now I'm, like, a psycho at the moment. I am glad, (laughs) I guess. Glad you brought your energy. I am. I'm tired. I've been tired all week. I went to bed at 7 p.m. one day this week. Today, you said, I'm going to go talk to my parents, and I'm gonna, then I'm going to call you to start, and I laid down. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take a power nap. Yeah. Because um, I've been tired. I spent 14 hours at work on Wednesday this week. And, like, not just 14 hours in the building. I was basically working for the whole 14 hours. So, um, yeah, I'm doing great. Sounds like it. Do you have anything exciting happen this week? Um, I got my car fixed again. What was wrong with it this time? I needed to replace the coil. <laughs> something. Something coil. Some kind of engine coil that was mm-hmm, had a hairline mm-hmm. fracture in it and four spark plugs. Nice. Nice. You didn't just change out all the spark plugs while you were there? Just four of them? I have absolutely no idea how that works. Okay. I just trust my mechanic. Fair. Fair. Because um, I've been having the same two guys fix my car for the whole time I've had a car. So, like, if they tell me that's what needs <laughs> to be fixed, I believe them. That's fair. Yes. <laughs> I, I also would do that. So, um, glad that's fixed. Yeah. Um, nope. Not really. Well, I have had a week. Yeah. (laughs) I've not been well. Um, I keep forgetting to take my medicine, and it's really screwed up my uh, whole person. Um, But in a brief um, intermission from that, I uh, went and saw Aladdin on Broadway. And it was my first musical back on Broadway since COVID. It was so Yeah, nice. I like how we were supposed to record the podcast on Wednesday. And then I texted Courtney on Monday and said, I am so sorry. I messed up. I know I, I said I was free Wednesday, but I actually have a meeting that I can't get out of. So she said, oh, okay, that's fine. I'm mm-hmm. going to go to Broadway instead. <laughs> Look, that was the one lottery ticket. I only go when I win the lottery ticket. (laughs) It was $34 to go see it. Latin. 34. So obviously I went. Obviously. Who's in in Aladdin right now? Um the guy, so the genie is the guy who did um Michael James Scott. Yes. He did the Australia. Yes. Was where he premiered Aladdin. Yeah. Yes. Um, I do not know the names of the other two people. The Aladdin is very tall and gangly. I'm sure he's lovely. Um, I liked, I, this is my second time seeing Aladdin. It was actually the first show I saw on Broadway with uh, Kate and Jamie. Mm-hmm. And um, he was tall and gangly. And I really liked my first Aladdin better. But Jasmine. She's uh, beautiful. Uh, yeah. She apparently is the first South Asian woman to have the role of Jasmine and she was amazing. I loved her. So um, Jeffrey Donovan, is that his name? No, no. The guy who plays, I don't know if he played the Sultan or Jafar. Are you talking about Jonathan Freeman? That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Jeffrey Donovan's a different person. He sure is. Um, he is. I have also seen him on Broadway. I believe it's the right person I'm thinking of, but it was a different show. And it wasn't a musical. Probably. He's been in quite a few things. No, I was just um, looking. I sometimes yeah. like to look and see if I know anyone in the shows. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there were, these people were like, have been around Broadway, a lot of them. Yeah, no, I, the, the leads, I know of them all. But sometimes I know ensemble people, like actually know them, but not yeah. this time. 
Not in that um, one. They were all fantastic. I had a great time. I bought a new coffee mug because I had the blue tea mug. And so now I have the black coffee mug. Of course. And um, that like was a real, real peak in my, in my week. My peak was new coffee creamer. Oh, what is it? Vanilla cannoli cream latte. Oh, is it like, what brand is this? Super sweet. It's International Delight. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but I only use International Delight coffee creamers. I like Uh-oh. my, well, no, I don't put, sweet. I don't put sugar in my coffee, just cream, but I put yeah. flavored creamer. Um, but it's delicious. I usually use the Cold Stone sweet cream. Mm-hmm, they were mm-hmm. out of it. And I was like, well, does anything look interesting? And mom read me that flavor. And I said, oh, say less. Always. What is it? Take the cannoli. What is, <laughs> what is the lie? Take the gun, leave the cannoli. Right. That's yeah. the one. That's the line I was looking for. <laughs> yep. Yes. Um, yeah. I love a good coffee creamer. I drink coffee black mostly, <laughs> but we have a uh, Gregory's does have their single origin right now. Cause they like change out their limited edition flavor. It's currently Guatemalan coffee and it is bomb. It is so good. See, sometimes I drink flavored coffee and think that that will suffice for the flavoring, mm-hmm. and it doesn't. Like no, it's not day, a flavored coffee, though. No, it's I just, know, but like, because I oh, use yeah. flavored creamer usually. So, like the other right. day, I made a hazelnut brewed coffee. Oh no! And mm-hmm. it it didn't taste like hazelnut creamer. It's when you brew it, it smells. Oh, it smelled amazing. You drink it and it just tastes yeah. like black coffee. That's yeah. why I, <laughs> I do that with um, my uh, community coffee brand. I love, shout out community coffee. Love them. They're losing You do. Brand. You're obsessed with them. A little bit. And um, I love getting their flavored coffee because it smells so good when you brew it. And then it just tastes like coffee. <laughs> it's excellent. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world. Perfect. So. Wow. Speaking of my favorite things in the world, just kidding. I didn't know how to transition at all this time. Um, That's okay. But um, it happens. We are talking about Dead Like Me, season two, episode three. It's called Ghost Story. It came out on August 8th, 2004, and was rated 8.1 stars. The top song of the week that week was uh, Slow Motion by Juvenile. That's a jam. It's a real, a real bop, as the kids say. Man, it is, <laughs> it is probably the worst song I've ever heard. Like, do I uh, listen to it and dance to it? Oh, yes. yes. Is it a good song? Not at Absolutely all. Absolutely not. No. Um, the number one movie of the week was Collateral, which I, it stars Tom Cruise. I know nothing about it. Um, but Jason Statham's in it, so I thought of you. I do like Jason <laughs> Statham. I um, he have plays heard like that a title. He plays like a random ensemble person. He's like not even in it. In it. Oh, so I probably haven't seen it. Is what you're talking probably about. not. No. Um, okay. And you know how I always like to look for um, interesting events that happened that day, and very rarely yes. does anything happen. Well, <laughs> August eighth, two thousand four, was a very interesting day in history. And as soon as it popped up, what happened that day, I said, oh, my God, I remember this. Granted, we all know in 2000, August 2004, I was 12. So I'm sure my opinions of it at the time were really just confusion. But on <laughs> August 8th, 2004, there was an incident in Chicago when a boat running through the river in Chicago that was chartered by the Dave Matthews Band, emptied its septic tank into the river and put out a massive pile of shit into the river in Chicago. Yes. Yes, I do not remember it happening when it happened, but I've heard that story now so many times, so I uh, did know it existed. Well, August 8th, 2004, was the Dave Matthews Band shit incident. Yes, yes. That is a special day in our lives. 
Oh, I, goodness. I cannot. Like, I literally was just like, August 8th, 2004. And the first thing on Google that popped up was like Dave Matthews Band. And I was like, oh, my God. Had you heard about it before? Yeah. But like, okay. I remembered like hearing it when I was 12 and being like, ha ha ha, they put poop in the river. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like- <laughs> But also, right. like, I don't like the Dave Matthews Band. I find them to be incredibly overrated and um, not that great. Like, I don't have strong feelings one way or another. So I'm kind of just like, well, if it had been Nickelback, that would have been a story. Yes. Because it would have just said Nickelback drops Nickelback albums in the river. <laughs> Look, I... I, I love, love Nickelback. Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> Confession. I actually really like Nickelback. <laughs> I also do. My dad also really likes them. <laughs> so um, we in were fact, a Nickelback family. I've um, only made like six TikToks in my entire life of having TikTok. And one of them is about Nickelback. So it's been a, seven years since I've been on TikTok, but I probably watched it. I went through and watched your six videos and liked them all. Yeah, you sure did. Um, my video was about the fact that despite the fact that I have a borderline Canadian accent and I've lived in um, across the street from Ontario for my entire life, I was 28, 29 years old when I realized that the reason how you remind me with Nickelback rhymes story with sorry is because they're Canadian and they say sorry. I did know that. I did know that. It I did take you a little, a little bit of time. I've been able to sing that. I sang that song at karaoke when I was 11. Just figured it out. Love that for you. Well, um, this episode says, uh, our little blurb says, George goes on a happy time retreat and struggles to let down her defenses. George's family continues to try to sell their house. Mason loses the note with his intended reap, and Daisy helps him correct his mistake. Not incorrect. Um, it was directed by uh, Milan Chez. Oh, God, I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> Love when that happens. No, I think that, well, the problem is I know that the letters that I wrote cannot be the correct letters because it says Chez Love. Which, which is not correct. Which I mean, I just make up she's she's leave. She love. It's C H E Y L O V, not L O V E. (laughs) That is okay. Mm -hmm. And it's a Y, not a Z. It's she. Yes. C H E Y L O V. Congratulations. I can't write. Um, That's okay. You don't have to know how to write. You know, he um, was an actor, director, producer in theater in um, Toronto, moved to L.A. actually to become a director for 24. He did 16 episodes of 24 and then became a producer for that show. He has about 150 episodes of television altogether under his belt. Um, Most of them are one-offs. He's done like one episode of Monk. This is his only episode of Dead Like Me. He did an episode of Chuck, an episode of Castle. Um, he has done five episodes of Once Upon a Time and from seasons Those are one. are all things I like. Yeah. And they're from seasons one and two when the show was actually like still really right. good. And then he also did 10 episodes of Bones. Mm-hmm. Look, I, we've talked, I know we've talked yeah, about this before, about beating a dead horse, but maybe if I ever get out of season one, I'll like it. But yeah, his episodes weren't from season one. So. I'm just not there yet. But the rest of the um, shows are. Cold. He's also a married to an author who whose books seemed like I should have heard of them, but I hadn't. Her name is Lori Lansons. Is that also her author name? Yes. Okay. Um, she's a Canadian novelist. Uh, she's written I, The Girls, The Mountain Story, Rush Road Home, The Wife's Tales, This Little Light. She's kind of, it kind of seems like she's similar to like Jodi Picoult style. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
I think um, those books are all going to make me cry, so I haven't read them. Fair. Absolutely. But I do have a they... friend who is a Canadian author. She lives here now. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. It was written by Stephen Godshaw and Annie Weissman. Um, he's a returning author, and I thought she was a returning author because the name was so familiar to me, but she is not. This is her first episode. The reason her name is so familiar to me is because she's a playwright. Oh. And mm-hmm. so I, um, she wrote, oh, God, what is the name of the play that I knew when I saw her name? <laughs> I'm an idiot, really. Today, like, my brain is just not there. Um, what happens? Motherhood Out Loud is the one of hers that I knew. Um, I did not know that. It's kind of, she didn't write the whole thing. She wrote part of it. Um, she's one of the authors of it. It's kind of like the vagina monologues, but about being mm. a mom, not just about being Got a it. woman. Um, and then she also wrote Be Aggressive and Hold, Please. With be other- aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Um, but I'm then sure in terms of television, <laughs> um, she is actually the creator of the show's physical which is on HBO right now, and um, Annie, or um, not, not Annie, American Family. Which one is that? I think that one had, I want to say it had Brittany Snow in it. What? Um, For some reason, I thought you were going to say Bruno Mars. I was like, he's not even on TV. (laughs) No. American Family, not American Family Insurance, American Family TV show, Google. Yeah, Google. Um, yeah, it's from, um, two th- it's from t- no, that doesn't seem right. Not an American this family. From 2002? No, that's not the correct one. Okay. It was created by Gregory Nava. Yeah. Okay. Well, there was a show once upon a time called American Family. Oh, just family. kidding. It's called, it's called Almost Family, not American Family. I can't. Oh, that's the one with a, that one does have Britney Snow. Okay. It just came out recently. Yeah. That's just called, again, cannot write apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we start the episode with George giving a um, voiceover about a story about a guy in a swamp that I fully related to, which I'm not going to go into detail about purely because the story is much more relevant later in the episode. Right. So then as um, she is sitting there at her desk, um, being depressed, really, um, Dolores comes over and begins to lecture her (laughs) about her commitment to the team. Yes. Which, to be fair... She has none. Right. And like, in George's point of view, of course not. She's dead. In <laughs> Dolores's point of view, get it together. Right. Right. Um, because they are going to have a happy time retreat. Um, Dolores says some really stupid stuff about, um, it only happens once a year. That's why it's called annual. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, actually, that just means it happens every year. Right. <laughs> right. I. <sighs> yes. um, anyway. Um, so they're going to go she on did. retreat, and George is like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going. Yeah. So then we go to Daisy and George at a gym they are doing a reap together where they um are reaping the souls of two of the dumbest women i've ever seen in my life these women when i saw them they made me immediately think of paris hilton and nicole ritchie from back in the day which this would have been about the time that paris and nicole were super yes. popular their names were chloe and zoe and they had the goal of sleeping with someone from every country in the world Yes. And, uh, goals that you should have definitely that right right add it to the bucket list Ooh. i don't um, even know that i would like 
that I like people enough to like even want to talk to someone. From There's 197 a countries in the world. That's a lot of people. Yeah, that's a lot of people. I, I don't I even want to know. Like if I, I don't even know if general. I want to talk to 197 people, let alone sleep with 197 yes. people. I know I don't want to talk to 197 people. Like no, no question. yeah. Um. Um, but. It's really sweet, and uh, Daisy's actually kind of being a big sister in the way that I thought I she couldn't, and like it's reminiscent of the Betty relationship, and I really liked it. Um, and Daisy says something really funny. Um, she's trying to like George is trying to find a picture of a fake family to put on her desk at work so that Dolores will get off her back, and she mm-hmm. says that she sees these people and they look like they could be a nice family. And Daisy says that they look like Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> and George is like, well, I'm not a Republican. Are you? And she goes, I'm an actress. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, that whole conversation sent me down a rabbit hole. Because oh, God. she also, when they start talking, when she also asks her if, she's, if she went to the gym, when she was uh, alive and she said, no, our diet was to drink slow gin and we smoked lucky stripes. So then I had to look up fad diets that were weird diet. Like, obviously there's a ton of like weird diets. Yeah. I found some that were like off the wall. I want to see. No, but I mean, in 1938, drinking slow gin and smoking lucky strikes is the closest thing to working out. Anybody was doing in Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seems life was much simpler then. Um, so there's a Twinkie diet. They say if you eat 10 Twinkies a day, it's 1,500 calories. Um, okay, so true story. Hold on. Before, oh God. speaking of fat diets, the Twinkie diet is ridiculous. Yes. But before you go too in-depth, I want to tell you about the fat diet I created for myself. Oh, God bless. So when I was like 16, no, 13, I was definitely 13 because I was in North Carolina with my grandparents. I found out that Mariah Carey had lost an F ton of weight because she went on what was called the purple diet where she only ate foods and drinks that were purple, which is like plums and like red onions, cabbage and eggplant, like healthy foods that are purple. So I was like, well, I don't like the color purple, which is dumb because purple is my favorite right. color, but I just didn't want right. to be Mariah Carey. So I was like, I'm going to go on the orange diet where I only eat foods that are orange, which could include carrots and oranges, right? But right. I stuck mostly to Cheetos. Fanta. <laughs> right. Like <laughs> things that were orange, but not at all healthy and that was my fad diet i was like i want the orange diet as i'm eating a giant tub of cheese balls (laughs) i could get i could get behind that right i could totally do an orange diet i would uh like that or the brown diet there's so many things that are brown though like brown opens it up to too many options i needed my choices limited oh no i'm trying to expand my options yeah um i have have two more diets that i had never heard of any of these okay and they're wild the next one is the blue glasses diet they say if you wear like a tinted color these are not blue light blocking glasses they are blue glasses because then your food does not look as appetizing because of the tint on the glasses and so you won't eat as much false i eat so many foods that look disgusting Right. Like, I was like, that's not going to do it for me. Like, I ordered escargot last week. I'm fully aware that it smells and does not look good. Oh my God, I love escargot. Right? And the bread. Oh, yeah, it's delicious. So I was like, I don't know if that'd work for me. I guess I could see it working for some people, but not for me. And this one, I just, I just don't understand people. Um, The cotton ball diet. You eat cotton balls to fill yourself up before you eat your food that's toxic and and not horrible that good in any way the texture 
No, I mean, there's a lot of things that I eat that texturally are probably not great, but like, well, I, there are some textures, like I can't, I just can't do an onion. I don't like the flavor. I don't like the texture. It's not good for me, but like cotton ball is like, I guess it's like cotton candy, but yeah, it doesn't no. melt as fast. Here's the thing. This is exactly what I was afraid of. Cotton balls. Someone asked, is eating cotton balls dipped in juice going to help me lose weight? Cotton balls are typically made from bleached polyester fibers. So you're going to drink sugar. You're going to put sugar onto your bleached fibers. Great diet. They literally, if you have too many cotton balls in your stomach, it can cause a bezoar. Are yeah. You, that, mm, no. And, and juice has a lot of sugar in it. Yeah. That is not oh. good. I'm not going to do it for you. No, I Maybe literally was like, I'm pretty sure cotton balls are bleached. And I looked it up and I was cracked. Yeah. No. Nope, Maybe that's... they weren't in whatever year this fad diet. I didn't look at the years on them. I just Googled crazy diets. So uh, this is why I don't diet. I'm like, fad diets just come back around. And I'm just like, look, I'm going to do what I do. Today I'll have a salad. Tomorrow I'll have pasta. We'll see what happens. Right. I, I really, Like on Wednesday when I worked for 14 hours, I had a really nice spinach mandarin uh chicken salad that sounds so good and then i had panera mac and cheese for dinner oh that also sounds so good right um so then they go to the diner and uh george is complaining about not fitting in um rubes being rube uh Daisy has got something going on. I don't know what was going on in that scene. And then, because then they never came back to it really at all. But like everybody's got these new waffle punch cards. And Daisy is apparently like eating at the Waffle House by herself a ton without anybody else there because they're all like shocked at her number on her punch card. Yeah. And I was, um, I don't know what that was about. I also don't know. She has really nice hair right now, though. I love her bangs. Um, But this scene made me think of Caitlin because she loves a good punch card. Every time we'd go to a place that has a punch card, she's like, this is excellent marketing. I know it's my degree. Excellent marketing. You're going to get me every time. And she will fill that punch card up and get it free. She spends so much money on punch card places. So (laughs) I always think of her with punch cards. But... It's interesting yeah. that they all of a sudden have them at the Waffle House. Um, D- Dare Waffle House. My, Dare my Waffle House. Um, then, oh, we're talking, we're getting some flashbacks <laughs> about um, how, why George feels like it has always been her life to be out of place and to not fit in. And we get a flashback to a time when she was a kid. And her parents were laying on the floor <laughs> hiding with all the lights off so that carolers didn't know they were home. And George was like, what are we doing? And they were like, well, we're hiding because we don't want them to know that we're here. And then they'll try to like come back and like sing with us some more. And George just was like, oh, okay. And she got up and opened the door and was like, shut up, go away. We don't want you. <laughs> Never come back. <laughs> she was like, we want a silent night. And so then yeah. they singing silent night. She goes, no, shut up. <laughs> I laughed so hard at that point. Like this, that's one thing about the second season so far. It's, it's had some like really funny moments that I was yeah. not expecting. Yeah. Um, then we go back to work at happy time and george is being very introspective still having all kinds of moments in her own head about how she's feeling left out and wants to figure out how to blend in and everything well, she was also whatever after the at the end of the flashback carol she's like flashback she's like what if my life was different and had her like singing and happy i was like george happy is terrifying like this is not normal george i was like i can't even picture her with a smile like that on her face yeah it was so strange so then she's sitting there being introspective and the uh happy time retreat organizer greg pops his head over the counter to talk to her and this is where i realized that i had not looked up we had any guest stars because i know that man 
He like not, per- guy not personally. Show. Yeah. His name is Lachlan Monroe. Mm-hmm. He's a phenomenal actor. He's in just about absolutely everything. The last thing I watched him in, he was in something else that I watched this week. The last thing I remember seeing him in was a uh, Riverdale, but I think I also saw him in something else recent, more recently than that. What? I mean, I he the I watched hit a, a old. Um, we talked about him on the podcast already. No, oh, we didn't. Maybe I don't we think did. So no, he was also in um White Chicks, and I thought we talked about it, but we talked about somebody else who was in White Chicks. Um, oh. <laughs> I watched an old. Hallmark movie that he was in but then so I was going to talk about that but then I realized that I saw him in something literally this week <laughs> Love Hard oh that wasn't this week though but he was apparently in Love Hard too oh uh, that's what I watched him and he's in Peacemaker I don't even know what that is oh so um you know <laughs> I'm sorry it's part of the DCEU um but you know how there was Suicide oh. Squad and then the Suicide Squad Okay. Yes. So John I Cena played. Of them. Okay. So John Cena played a character. <laughs> John Cena played a character in the second Suicide Squad movie called Peacemaker. Right. And HBO right. had a series about him. Yes. And it is without a doubt one of the dumbest things, but like a good kind of dumb. Like my dad mm-hmm. and I just we were my dad, mom and dad and I watched the first episode and a half, and then I had to go to bed last night, cracking up like. And I was like, the stupidest thing is every review I've read of it has said it's a terrible show. And I go, and it is, but kind of on purpose. Is it like Deadpool-esque? Yes, but like not as witty. Okay. It's it's intentionally stupid. Mm -hmm. Like the theme song just like has them all dancing to like 80s music for like no reason. Like it's, it's intentionally stupid and I'm obsessed. And he is in that. And that's what I saw him in this week. Gotcha. But yes. But so he's been in Riverdale. He was in White Chicks. He was in Charmed. He does a half ton of Hallmark movies. He was in Love Hard. He's in Peacemaker. Like, I love Lachlan Monroe. And I literally go, as he leans over, and they're like, this is Greg. I was like, oh my gosh, that's Lachlan Monroe. I know him. <laughs> Whatever. I saw it. I did not know his name. So I was like, oh my gosh, he's always the bad guy. What's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> no, he- very well. This is not like horror. It's no. not. He's not about to kill anyone. No, but no, he's not. Um. Then we go to back to the last house, and Joy is being super fucking extra, trying to get the house ready for a viewing for the realtor, and she like sets up this dining room to like look beautiful, and then. Reggie's like, why are we having a dinner party? She's like, we're not. This is for the realtor. We're going to have a picnic. And Reggie goes, eating food on the floor doesn't make it a picnic. That's also how homeless people eat. I know. I was like, poor Joy. She's trying so hard. She just wants them to get along and to sell the house. She is, but she's trying hard. She's trying so hard, but she's doing things that are making it worse for Reggie. The problem is Reggie's not telling her, but also Reggie's like 11. Of course, she's not telling her. Right, right. Um, so then we go back to the diner where Rube and George are having a conversation about pie. That is really a conversation about life. It was yes. very deep. Um, I also related to Rube a lot in the moment when he was talking about as a kid. He thought that pie crust was just the thing that holds the good part on the plate. But now yes. as an adult, he enjoys pie crust and i, I was like the that, same way i was like that's very true because as an adult the crust will make a break or make or break a pie you for have me. to have a good flaky crust unless you're doing like something that needs a good graham cracker crust mm-hmm. those are different things and uh, like i made tarts for christmas oh, yeah they were a hong kong egg tart which is something i learned <sighs> in asia and i'm obsessed but when i had Sounds them in amazing. asia they were made with like a chinese puff pastry But the recipe that I found online, I didn't realize was a different and it was a shortbread crust. Oh, yeah. And it was still delicious. And everyone who tried them was like so thought they were so good and was like, oh, you did such a good job. They're so worth it. And I was so disappointed because in my mind, that's not the crust that goes with the egg tart, even though like they were good. And everyone said I did a great job like baking them. I was like, this is not my crust. (laughs) 
No, I feel that because like I make a chocolate pie every year and it never sets. I have yet to master it, but I'm working on it. It's delicious. I make it like from scratch. And, uh, but I always, we always buy a pre-made crust and I'm like, I just need that flaky crust to, that it goes in because whenever yeah. it inevitably doesn't set, I'm still going to want to eat it because the crust is good with the chocolate pudding that is now that I've made. The, yeah. It's not a pie. <laughs> um, and George is like, Hey, by the way, I'm taking the day off tomorrow because I'm going to go on the happy time retreat. And he's like, death waits for no one. <laughs> And she's like, he's not wrong, but, and she's, and she's like, okay, uh, I'll see you the day after tomorrow. Like, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, and then we go back to the last house. It is the next morning and, uh, joy is <laughs> trying to fake being the perfect housewife so that these people will buy her house. And she puts, like, an entire roll of, like, Pillsbury chocolate chip cookie dough just in the oven to bake as, like, a (laughs) solid log. And she's like, it's just for the aroma. And Reggie goes, you know, you could just bake cookies. (laughs) When I tell you I laughed so hard at this part, I was, I don't know, I think this is the part that got me the most out of the entire episode. I lost it. I was like, Joy is trying way too hard. But also, like, if I was at a pinch... I might would also do the same thing. I'm not saying I wouldn't. She, like, put flour on her face and her (laughs) apron. And, like, I was like, Joy, got it together. Um, (laughs) Gosh, I, like, I always like Joy, but I love her this season. um, You know why? Because there's no Clancy. Yeah, I noticed that. I noticed that. Thank God. Um, So then we go... We go to uh, the road trip to the retreat where uh, Millie slash George and Dolores are riding in George's Mustang to the woods. And um, Dolores is very upset because George got the chocolate for the s'mores and she did not get Hershey's bar- Hershey bars. Which, to, to be, be fair, fair, it's not a s'more without Hershey's. Exactly. Dolores, as ridiculous as she is, this time she's not wrong. Right. So they stop at this, like, backwoods-ass gas station um, to get um, the chocolate. And we see these hunters, this hunter who's, like, kicking his dog and uh Dolores is very upset and she's like I don't condone the animal cruelty and George is like they're hunters yeah which I it's different I totally agreed with both of them in that moment because I was like do not kick that dog but then I was like but also like they're literally shooting animals it's kicking a dog is like if you want to if you want to talk about animals as a whole that's pretty low on the scale (laughs) If you want to talk about being a decent human, that's a pretty shitty thing to do. But like, <laughs> exactly. So but also when they were walking around, she said, "I don't remember." She said, "Like, do you hear something? Do you see that?" She just goes, "That's the IQ falling." And <laughs> was like, "That is what I feel like when I like when people who don't live in my hometown come home with me, and we like go to a gas station." And I feel like that's exactly what it's like when I bring them. I'm just like, that's just, this is where the rednecks live. And uh, it's fine. I mean, we took you to our gas station. That was, that's what, didn't we stop me at snacks after the wedding at the gas yes, station? Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. That's the one that everyone goes to. We call it four way. You want to know why? Is that a four way stop? Is that a four way stop? <laughs> We're it's very creative. I got big brains. We're very creative in the country. High IQs. Um, So then we go back to the last house where the realtor has appeared with this couple who is pregnant and wants to buy the house to start their family. And um, Reggie is being a complete brat. And Joy is losing it a little bit. I think um, this 
trying so hard to be perfect has worn too hard on her and she um what did she say that i just she said i will tell you i wrote it down perfect because he keeps trying to say she's pregnant we're pregnant and he was like i don't know how to say it and she just looks at him she says he's she says you just say since i impregnated her take responsibility (laughs) she was unless it's not your baby and right unless it's not your baby they were like (laughs) and the realtor was like they want to buy your house right it was so funny oh joy god bless her um then we go back to the diner where rube is handing out post-its and he is in a rush um, and he's like, here's your post-it. Here's your post-it. Um, I'm taking the day off. And by that, I mean, don't talk to me. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, Mason, don't fuck up. Or he goes, he goes, don't talk to me. I will be back tomorrow and don't fuck up. And by don't fuck up, I mean Mason. Yeah. And Mason's Poor like, Mason. Mason's like, what? Why me? And then immediately loses his post-it note. And it's like, sir, that that's why you. I was like, oh, that no. right there. Um, we go back to the house and Reggie is showing the couple her bedroom and she creepily says, um, that her sister comes back and the, the dad, like the husband of the couple is like, Oh, like how does, how does she come back? And she's like, well, I mean, like she doesn't face to face, not face to face. Like she just comes back and then the door slams in the wind and she goes, that wasn't her. But she like waited a beat before she said it. <laughs> I'm telling you, this season is so much funnier. I mean, like this, this episode in particular was like so funny. It was. For I don't know what reason. I don't either. Maybe we've lost it. We are in too deep. We are. Um, we go to camp and they're doing a stupid animal game around the campfire where they're saying what animal they think they would be. Um, I love that game because I always make people really uncomfortable. Excellent. Because my question for you is, <laughs> what kind of animal would you be? Um, I, Truthfully, I'm probably also a cat for a lot of the reasons that George and Dolores say that they're like cats, but not all of them. But what I ever, I'm, whenever I'm in a situation where I'm with like people who don't know me well and they ask what animal <laughs> I say I am, I go, I'm a Komodo dragon because they like to be alone and they kill their young if they get too close. I like it. I think that's fair. I um, I like to say that I'm a penguin um, because they're clumsy. They like rocks. They, I used to collect rocks as a child. Um, they like the water and cold weather and they love fish. And I was like, I like all of those things. And every time I go to the zoo, I just want to go stare at the penguins for like 15 minutes. They had an excellent penguin exhibit in St. Louis, by the way. Um, the last time I saw penguins was at SeaWorld with Montana and we stayed in the penguin exhibit for much, much longer than we should have because part of it was was uh, hot and the penguin exhibit is not hot. Um, but also like we were we did not seem like grown adults. That's exactly how me and Rachel were. We went in August whenever we were driving up to uh, Michigan. Yeah. And I didn't realize there were two separate sections to the penguin exhibit. Oh, oh. So we go through and it's like the inside exhibit that you're used to. And I was like, okay, this is great. We stood there for like five minutes. I was like, okay, I guess this is fine. Nothing's really happening. And we don't have to stay here forever. Cause we were like driving eight hours that day. Yeah. And uh, then we walked outside and they had this whole outside exhibit where they like jumped towards you. When I tell you they jumped towards you, I thought they were going to hit you in the face when these penguins jumped at you. And then they just dive in and swim. It was amazing. So then we were there for like another 15 minutes because I of course. could not walk away. Yeah. I love so. that. Um, then we go back to Mason, who is um, losing his absolute mind. He is uh, going under tables and swearing at people and freaking out to <sighs> Tiffany, who Tiffany is over his nonsense. Absolutely. Um, and then we see Daisy on her reap. She is at a biker bar with um, a eight foot man named Tiny. And um, Daisy, because she is a magical little elf nymph, um, just is immediately all of these biker men are endeared by her. Yep. 
and um, Mason shows up in his craziness and grabs her to, and then all of the bikers try to immediately fight Mason for touching her. And she's like, mm, no, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. She, she was like, he might not have been raised well, but he's fine. <laughs> Um, and then Mason's like, Hey, uh, I lost my post-it note. And she's like, okay, gotta go. Bye. (laughs) Um, so we go back to camp where, um, Frank is (laughs) losing his mind and saying that he's a leopard because he's still in love with his ex fiance. Um, their story was a little unnecessary. Funny. It was unnecessary. But, like, it felt like, it felt out of place, but it was funny because, like, this felt more like a scene that you see, like, the office, when the office goes on a retreat. Yeah. And you get, like, these random people that I'm sure we're never going to hear from again. Oh, for sure. Um, But then Millie finally starts to open up about how she feels like she's a cat, but, like, not a house cat, a stray cat, because, like, you shouldn't touch her and she's alone and wandering and all of the nonsense and she's actually having emotions and then all of a sudden she looks up and Rube's watching her have emotions yes speaking of Rube the next scene we go back to Daisy and Mason breaking into Rube's apartment that is a dangerous game um Daisy's impressed by the furniture Mason's impressed by the alcohol and then they're both slightly overwhelmed by the literal billion post-its that Rube has. He almost had as many as Crystal. Right. They were just organized nicer than Crystal's. That's very um, true. But also, the post-it thing was kind of overwhelming for me, too. Um. But because of the emotional reaction they had in the next time we see them. Yeah. um, Because they say there's this many more. When they see that many post-its, they aren't thinking about work or Rube. They're thinking about the number of post-its correlating to the number of people who still have to die. And feeling feeling a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, when Mason says a line that I will now be using in my everyday life. Maybe not every day because I don't drink every day, but frequently he says when he tells her that he wants to pour some like alcohol, he says, let's lube our synapses up a bit. Yes. I was I, like, I did like that, that is line. now how I'd like to describe drinking alcohol. Um, then we get a scene of a random lady finding the post-it, which obviously has her own name on it. The post that always finds a way. Yep. Um, Rube uh, and is talking to De- er, George in the woods, and uh, turns out that he has post it um, for her. Uh, we have some funny moments with Dolores and Rube, um, where it's always he, a good combination. Uh, I love them together. Um, talking about how he can't tell Dolores why he's there because the second A in AA stands for anonymous. <laughs> he's like, no, the second one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, and then um, Maisie and Daisy. Maisie and Daisy. No, Daisy. Yes. <laughs> Mason and Daisy are absolutely smashed. Yes. Dancing around Rube's apartment covered in post-it notes. It is kind of cute. It's adorably romantic. I was so sure that they were going to kiss and then they didn't. Oh, I was waiting I was for it. So disappointed. Um, also, Mason was making fun of how old all of Rube's music is, which obviously makes sense because Rube is ancient. But then when he got to the Barry Manilow record, I almost peed. <laughs> Of course. Of course, the only thing that was made before 1909 that Rube listens to is Barry Man or after 1909. Right. Barry right. Manilow. Yeah. Yes. Um, we, go back to the la- <laughs> we go back That's to the last house 
I know. I, I know what a fanalo is. I just had a <laughs> slight moment of auditory processing issues. Well, I was thinking because Caitlin's mom, Miss Tammy, we used to call her a fanalo because she loved very manalo also. <laughs> um, um, so back to the last house where um, the guy, the couple is about to leave and the guy's like, let me just take a second. And he goes to talk to Reggie because this stranger of a man is more aware of the fact that Reggie's clearly having a breakdown than her own mother is. And he's like, hey, so uh, how you feeling? Like when he said that your sister comes back, like what do you mean? <laughs> Like, what was her favorite part of the house? And he can tell that she's saying crazy things because she doesn't want to leave the house because she doesn't want to lose her sister. And Joy overhears all of that. And is like, oh, right. Yeah. Um, I also have a question about this scene. It may be trivia. It may just be me making stuff up. Yeah. Um, Did they use a different dog for JD? Um, I don't have the answer to that. It's not in the trivia, but it does. I do believe it is a different dog because it's not the same color. Like right, the fur, the fur is a different color. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a little bit darker. Than yes. Last time um, then we go back to uh, Rubes. I couldn't figure out where, what place they were. And Mason is having an absolute breakdown. And Daisy is the sweetest thing and she just like lays down with him and it's like and she admits that she watches him and it is so cute and so there for it she's like i know you read every post-it note when you first get it because you're curious because you want to know things and oh oh yeah then we go back to camp where rube is telling a ghost story And this is where the story of the swamp comes back into play because he's telling the story and all of these things are happening underneath it. So Joy and Reggie are both alone reading and they hear a noise and they both kind of like want to go get the other one, but then they don't. Uh, George finds her reap and it is the asshole man from the gas station um, earlier. Mason is running around in circles searching for his reap and eventually finding her and doing his job and daisy is cleaning up rube's place and making sure that mason doesn't get caught having been in there um and the story is really depressing uh yeah yeah I was just waiting for it to be Rube's story about how he died. And that's why he's so like shook up about his wife because he never saw her again. But then it never ended. <laughs> well, it it's a it's an actual Grimm's fairy tale. Oh. Which is only makes sense because Reggie's reading Grimm's fairy tales in the oh. episode. Yes. I no, see. it is not Rube's story, unfortunately. It could be. It, it could be. We don't know when Rube died. Can you imagine Rube saddling up a horse, though? No. <laughs> no. Um, then Rube and George have a little moment um, where he's like, it's okay to have feelings, you know? We all go through stuff. You're going to be okay. And. um, Oh, I couldn't figure out what I said. And then we go back to the last house where uh, Joy is attempting desperately to get Reggie on her side. The phone rings. And nobody's there. And Joy's like, if that doesn't stop happening, I'm going to change your number. And Reggie was like, please don't do that. There were so many, like, up and down moments in this yes. scene. Like, now, push. when that episode ended, my dad asked a question that 
And he, because he did not watch the whole episode, he came in in the middle and he was like, does Reggie actually know that George is still around? And I was like, no. Like, yes, so, but no. Like, you know what I mean? But George left her messages. Yes, I that's think what I'm saying. There's a ghost, George. Yes, around. that's what I'm saying. Is like she thinks that the phone ringing and the messages and all that stuff is George, but she doesn't have any actual tangible idea that George is right. still there. So I was like, yes, yeah. but no, like right. Um, yeah. So that was the episode. Um, but there is only one piece of trivia, and that is that uh, the biker bar was on Gentilly Street, which is not actually in. Uh, Seattle, it's in New Orleans. I was about to say, I was like, is it the one in New Orleans? <laughs> that is the only trivia for this episode. Been there. I don't know if I have. If it's not in the quarter, I probably have. It's not. Then I you probably, probably haven't. Um, there's not a lot going on there, but it's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what do you think? You got any final thoughts about the episode? A lot of emotions. Very funny moments and moments that I was like, my heart is about to break if, when I figure out what's going on here. <laughs> um, but I feel like I didn't get any answers to what I wanted. Correct. I was hoping to have more from Rube about, about Rube. And I thought that that's what we were going to get with that story. Didn't realize it was a Grimm's tale, so that probably would have change things a bit it also um, kind of it also kind of reminds me of the never ending story you know it's been 73 years since i've seen that movie so uh yeah but if you've ever I seen the never ending story the horse dying in the swamp is not something you forget yeah but i just i remember bits and pieces look i've seen it a thousand years ago um there was something else about this episode that i was gonna mention and i have completely forgotten what it was well oh i remember i remember okay, okay. so you know mason didn't drink for like half an episode or something and they made such a big deal about him not drinking but then like now he's just freely drinking again and no one has mentioned it well like yeah, no, no one has mentioned it, but Daisy does kind of have a conversation with him. Like, she's like, I don't like feeling drunk. And he's like, yeah, like, it, I like never had a problem with it. And she kind of is just like, but why? Like, she doesn't, they're too busy trying to find the post-it note, but she is perturbed by the fact that, like, he just isn't, he's so willing to let go of himself when he is yeah. worth more than he pretends to be worth. Right, because she's so worried about him, but it's yeah. not... It's not the drinking. And I was like, how have we, like, we made this a storyline in episode one. And then we, like, let it go. Yep. You know. So, those are my thoughts. Do you have thoughts? Um, my thoughts are... No, I mean, I said most of them already. Yeah, I don't have anything. Fair. Um, who would you like to punch? Well, thank you for asking. I'm prepared this week, oh, which okay. is not normal. Um, I would like to punch Dolores because she kept annoying me and she kept telling Millie how she, like Millie George, how she wasn't a team player. And I mean, true, it's not, she's not wrong, but like she just kept going on and on about it. And I was, it felt like she was just nagging George. And I was just annoyed. She probably wasn't the most like heinous person in this episode, but I was most annoyed by her. I think I would like to punch. Probably Joy, but like just because she's being a little nearsighted. Yes. Like she didn't really do anything wrong. She's just not getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I know grief coping, everybody's different, blah, blah, blah. But like, yeah. Who is your MVP? This week, it's a little weird, but it's Mason. 
because I just feel so bad for him. And I know he's going through a lot. And like, it's another moment where we see that he had a heart because he just, he just didn't want to take the soul. Even that he made such a big deal about losing his sticky note, even though he knew exactly where it was supposed to go because he'd already read it. And then he just got so torn up about all these other sticky notes. And I was just like, he's just, he's the person that just puts on a brave face and acts like a moron when he really is the most like upset all the time. Yeah. Like I just felt so bad for him. My MVP is Daisy. She was because almost mine. She, well, because everything with Mason, obviously, but then also like the stuff with George at the beginning and like, just like her being there for people. Yeah. She was almost mine this episode because of that, but I just, or Mason. Remember when I hated Daisy? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Just right. Kidding. It was like a month ago, but like, it wasn't. Things change. <sighs> Me too. Her character has developed a lot since she first got on the show. For sure. She's definitely turned more into like a Betty than a Daisy. Yeah. Which, like, it's like they tried to. When they introduced her, they wanted to completely change the character, and then they probably didn't get great feedback on that. Probably, and they also her. realized that Daisy being so vapid and like um, selfish created an an issue in the group instead of filling a hole. Like, right? Betty was the big sister, or the the like nurturing, the taking care mm-hmm. of Mason, the putting up with him when no one else will, the giving advice to George that she needed. Like, Roxy is the sarcastic one. Rube is the leader. Mason is the fuck up. George is the newbie. Daisy can't be vapid and selfish. That doesn't fit into that right thing. They had to have to have then another character come in to be this nurture, yeah this mm-hmm. nurturing thing and i like that they're giving it to her in a natural progression instead of just pretending that they didn't have that and she still says the like stupid things about being an actress and like right right and she like hasn't changed who she is but she's clearly on a journey of like self actualization and discovery that she mm-hmm. didn't get to do when she was alive and so now she's like I think right. it's-, and it's like we see a lot of her like vapidness that comes out in the beginning is because she doesn't open up to people and so it shows her opening up to these people more and becoming closer with them mm-hmm. and like and you're right it's it's just like a very I natural think progression her her story arc her character development and progression is main character worthy i absolutely agree hers she's the one who's had the the most and the most natural well done development mm-hmm Yes. George, you are not the main character. Daisy is. Thank you for coming to my talk. Nothing has happened since you've been on this show. No. You died. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. That Although the moment said. about talking about the cat and like realizing that she is not capable. Yeah, but she has these moments every few episodes for like a minute and a half. And then it's like it never happened. Like, yeah. she doesn't really grow from it. It just happens for a second. I think that that will start to change. I hope so. I mean, we have, what, like, six episodes left? No. <laughs> How no, many episodes are you? There's 15 in this season. Oh, I thought there was less. Did we have less last season? <laughs> yes, the first season was shorter. But, <laughs> yeah, no, we've still got, like, most of okay. the season left. So we have 11 episodes left. So she's got time. Well, 12 episodes left yes. from today, from, from this today, episode. Yes. yes. Right. Courtney and I have already watched episode four, I but can you guys won't see that math. for three more days. Yes. Um, but in those three days, if you would like to give us feedback or tell us what you think George's character progression should be, you can contact us on all of the social medias at Daphne Aliens. You can follow me at E-M-K-A-Y underscore superstar. And you can follow me at C-E cloud 13. And we will see you on Wednesday for episode four of Dead Like Me. See ya. Bye.